Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be talking about the global settings for your Suzy site. Now, the global settings can really set up a whole bunch of stuff that, uh, you know, you may want to define basically just your settings, right? It can set up your gutter styles, your output styles, the, the way that the math is calculated, um, how many columns you have, that sort of stuff. So to do this, we need to use a SAS concept called maps. And maps are new and a uh, latest version of SAS, I believe. Depending on when you're watching this video, make sure you just have the latest version of SAS updated if you have to, just to make sure you have this functionality. And what we can do is we can define a variable, and this variable is named Suzy. We're gonna do colon and then parentheses. And just like an object in JavaScript or a hash um, like a key value pair, we're able to define several other variables within this. Now what's great about this is that we could have variable names like math or gutters or uh, columns or any of that stuff and not have to worry about those variable names colliding with a variable name somewhere else in our application because they're all going to be wrapped up inside of this map. So what we can do is we can say columns and then colon 12. Now we want to end each line with a comma, and what's great about this is that we can already uh, see some effect of this by coming down here, deleting the of 12, and we don't need to tell it of 12 anymore because it's going to know that we have 12 columns, so spanning 8 and then spanning 4 at 9 should do the exact same thing as our site was doing before. Now if we come here and refresh, you'll notice there's no change, right? That's because uh, the site knows, right? The uh, Susie knows what to do because we're telling it it's 12. Now we can define a lot of other things within these global settings as well. We can have our gutters, so we can say gutters, and if we wanted to give these any sort of value here, we could. So we could say that they were one fourth the size, and then call, uh, comma refresh and what it's actually looking for here is like a ratio so you could say maybe it's like um you know 1 20th or something like that and now let's come to our page and see it should be should be a little bit different now you can see that they're actually much much smaller so i like the 1 4th because obviously 1 20th is pretty tight uh, but it's checking for a ratio here. Um, that's something good to know. Now, another thing we can say is um, the math style. By default, it's set to fluid so that all of our widths are set in percentages, right? And we like percentages and widths because when the container's fluid, that means the content's fluid as well. Um, however, if you want things to not be fluid and defined in actual widths, you could have the output uh, or the math style as static. And now static's going to make everything set to be M's. So we're gonna keep this as fluid and I can just put a comma here. Now next we have our output style and output is going to be float. And this is by the default the same way it should normally be. So technically we don't really even have to define this um, I'm just sort of showing you what you can put in here. Uh, there's also isolate, which might be a little bit overkill. You can read a little bit more about that. I personally just use float. Now we have also gutter position. And gutter position is something that you might have been wondering before uh, because in the last video, you saw when we defined our, 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 our columns right, we had a margin on only one of them instead of both of them. And you might have been wondering, well, I've seen it where the margin's on the left of the first one, I mean on the left of the last one, or there's a little bit of margin on both of them. Well, luckily, we have the option of setting that up however we'd like. We could have this be before so that our margin would be on the left-hand side uh, of the divs, or we could have this set to split. And now with split, you can see that each of our columns gets a little bit margin, and this might be more similar to how you've seen grids work in the past, and we have margin on the left and right of both of these, even though, uh, even though you know the container goes out to an extended width. So um, we also have uh, inside, which puts the padding instead of margin, so we could say inside, 
Now let's refresh. Now check it out, we have this as padding instead of margin. That could be totally useful if you wanted like the background color to extend, but you know, sort of padding under your inner content. And we also have something called inside static, which uh, basically uh, makes it so they're not percentages for your left and right. So uh, it makes it so your padding uh, is rigid on the edges. Okay, so what else can we define into these global settings. Well, I think it's gonna be useful to post the link to the docs of Suzy so you can check it out yourself. Uh, we have, There's all sorts of stuff from column width to box sizing stuff, um, some debugging stuff, and we're gonna get into a little bit more of it, but for now, I would just go to the docs and just test it out and see what you can do and see if you can try to emulate some sort of grid settings that you are used to or would like using. So this is an introduction to the global settings. Um, I hope it has empowered you to change your grid to be whatever you would want it to be. In the next few videos, we're gonna be going over some more complex stuff and we're gonna be doing some more awesome Suzy magic. So as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave a comment on the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. Um, I level up tuts. We also have a forum on our website you can post and ask questions on. We love to hear from you. So as always, this is Scott and thanks for watching, bye.